Kia ora, uh, my name is Dave Kennedy and I've got a passion for composting so I want to tell you about what I know about composting and what could work in your garden. Uh, I've got some notes here because I haven't got a very good memory but one thing I think we should realise is that um, our economy is a high waste economy. New Zealanders produce about 15.5 million, million tonnes of waste per year. Each household produces about one tonne of waste every year annually as well. So. 30% of our food in most Western countries is thrown out too. So there's a lot of waste in the way that we eat food and the way that we operate in our households. So to me, um, if you don't consider things waste and think of the uses that you can give them, um, any food that you have left over could easily make compost for your garden. Um, so there's different ways that you can compost. Um, I'm mainly going to be talking about the, the composting that you can see behind me but um, there are s small, kind of more containable ways of composting. Um, Bokashi is one form, which is a fermenting process. You can buy special buckets for that, or you can make them yourself. Um, if you want to find out more information and see links to other things about composting, I'd recommend you go to my blog, the Local Bodies blog, and um, put in composting, and you can find um, some research that I've done about different kinds of composting. So there's bokashi, which is a fermenting process that can be done in a bucket. There are worm farms. They also uh, can be fairly small and easy to manage as long as you keep uh, feeding the worms. Um, except you have to be really careful what you put into worm farms. They don't like citrus or um, onions and so forth. But um, they produce um, a really good liquid manure as well. So they're a useful way of uh, composting. A lot of people can see um, or you see those plastic drums um, in garden centres. I tend to find when I've tried them myself that um, you have to have a lot of dry matter in them to keep them operating, uh, otherwise they tend to get really mushy and smelly. Uh, you can also uh, use revolving barrels, so if you um, haven't got produce a lot of compost, you just keep turning the barrel and the heat um, slowly decomposes all the matter inside. But the method that I find far easiest, because I'm basically lazy, are these compost bins here. There's a lot of different ways you can make compost bin. Um, on my um, blog, um, you'll see instructions on how to make um, a basic wooden frame. Uh, you can buy these kind of wooden ones uh, in garden centres. Or you could just make frames like the one behind me, which were here when we first arrived, so they're years old. Um, they're just a wooden frame with some netting around them and that seems to work as well. I think the main idea is you need to get some airflow um, is really important. So in terms of the way that you um, make compost, um, the ways that I gather material for my compost bin are kind of varied. Most of it is um, uh, lawn clippings. You can see um, um, behind me um, there's an electric lawnmower and a little push lawnmower depending on the size of your property um, you can collect uh, grass it's high in nitrogen and creates a lot of heat heat's really useful for um, breaking down seeds um, if you've got a lot of good heat you're less likely to get weeds coming up in your soil so um, I find lawn clippings are really useful I also use uh, my lawnmower which is actually an electric one um, which is nice and quiet, I much prefer that to the petrol ones. Um, I use it to mulch down hedge clippings and leaves uh, and small twigs and if you break uh, matter down it's more likely to compost far quicker. So really useful machines. Um, you can see here I've got a chipper. Uh, it's not, a, it wasn't a particularly expensive one, it doesn't do very large branches but a lot of the matter you can see in a heap um, just beside it I would, at uh, different times, uh, chip it down and put it into the compost if it can't be used for firewood. So in our kitchen we have a compost bucket, as you can see here, where we put all our uh, kitchen waste. You can see um, tea leaves, coffee grinds, um, all sorts of things. Some people don't put um, onions and things in, or citrus. I don't mind, I just throw it all in there. It's easy does seem to break down. Um, the only things I don't put in my compost are some uh, fruit stones don't really break down and um, potato skins or um, cut-offs of potato 
um, can be diseased or they can actually just re-sprout and they're a nuisance. So I don't uh, tend to put potatoes in my compost. Some people are worried about um, pests in the compost bin. So you can see here um, I've used uh, some sheets of black polythene. Um, this has two functions. It um, keeps out pests, rats and mice to a certain extent, um, but it also keeps the heat in the compost bin, which is something that you want to have um, in your compost, is the heat. Um, so really useful. You don't have to use uh, polythene if you're anti-plastic. Um, even old carpet or something like that has the same purpose. Um, one useful thing um, is, I mean, I just throw things in as, as I um, uh, need to, but it's kind of good to mix up what you put into the compost bin so you're not putting all the same kind of material at once. I tend to um, wait to empty a compost bucket when I'm about to mow the lawns so that the kitchen material is buried amongst the grass also helps um, get rid of pests but um, um, and also uh, every so often use some uh, matter that's high in carbon like twigs and things so you can kind of um, mix them as you go but I don't always concentrate too heavily on, on having to do that. Um, a really useful um, herb is comfrey. Uh, if you grow some of this, it just is a, an annual and keeps coming up each year. It's really high in nutrients, it's a really good fertiliser. You can make tea out of comfrey, put it in a barrel and leave it to decompose. Um, I tried that one year but the smell was pretty horrendous. I think that's just part of um, um, comfrey tea so I've abandoned using it as a tea. Um, but I do um, regularly put leaves into the compost. It's a really good uh, starter for a new compost bed and I also use the leaves um, of comfrey uh, to put with uh, potatoes when I plant them. Apparently it really protects them from disease and gives them a good start as well. So comfrey is a very useful plant to have. So once um, I start building up matter in a bin I actually uh, run uh, bins in pairs. So I've got two pairs of compost bins. Um, if you use my method you only really need two. Um, so um, one compost bin I'll be uh, filling and um, you'll find that uh, if your compost bin is sitting on the ground you'll find that worms will naturally come through and they help the composting process as well. So most of my compost is full of worms as well. Um, but every time you put a new load of material in, you will find that the heat and the worms will get working. And even if you've piled your compost bin up really high, which I did just recently when I was mowing the lawns and putting it in here, within a matter of days, the level will drop as they do their work and um, it starts decomposing. Um, so probably over time, you know, it'll take some time to fill the bin. Once it gets to a point when you can't squeeze any more in, then hopefully you'll be able to transfer it to the second bin. So this is the second bin, so when this one's full, hopefully I've emptied all the compost from this bin here. Um, the advantage of transferring everything from one to the other is that you can break up the compost uh, if it's too uh, chunky into smaller bits, so it breaks down even uh, more easily. Also you may find that your compost is perhaps too dry or too wet so if you transfer it loosely into the next bin it'll dry out a little bit and um, hopefully uh, get it going again well. Or if it's too dry um, um, you can add a bit of water and um, as you're adding it into the other bin. So um, hopefully you can come and see the, I'll see if I can get some compost from the second bin and you can see the quality. Often you can tell by um, the smell how ready a compost is, it's got a nice sweet smell, smells like really nice soil and that'll be ready to put on the garden in springtime. Or I often use it as a mulch to go around potatoes and so forth as well. So really useful um, material compost is. Um, also if your lawn is struggling a little bit, rather than buying uh, the fertiliser, lawn fertiliser, um, you can actually just sprinkle compost over your lawn to give it a bit of a um, kickstart as well. 
So that's the end product of the compost. And the other thing I should have mentioned, when you're transferring it from one bin to the other, the more recently um, um, uh, put in material ends up at the bottom to compost further and all the well and truly um, composted material ends up on the top so you end up with the top stuff ready to use straight away. If I just left it in that bin I'd be wanting to get to the bottom all the time because that's where all the real rich compost is. Um, so by transferring it across uh, it makes it far more usable. So you can see here um, this is the bin that I'm filling at the moment. This one I'll be using shortly. Over here with the other two um, bins, this material I'm still using. I haven't really started this one over here. And this one is basically um, completed and I'm just waiting for it to break down a bit further before I transfer it across. And if I perhaps dig into this, you might see, hopefully you'll see some worms coming through. So you can see um, some worms in here um, doing their stuff inside there um, already. So once I start um, filling up this bin, I find the worms often migrate from uh, one bin to the next looking for more food. Um, if you're wanting to um, because uh, often the compost that people make is kind of chunky and um, a bit coarse. If you're wanting to grow seeds, um, then I suggest you use something like just over here. So you can buy a sieve like this. I just put it into a, an old pot and you dish your compost into that and give it a bit of a shake and it breaks down into a finer um, uh, soil that could be used for seed raising. I'll just check my notes to see if I've missed out anything. Oh, some other things that you can add um, if you ever go to the beach. Um, any form of seaweed is really good um, to add to your compost. Some people give it a bit of a rinse with a hose first to get rid of some of the salt, but it makes uh, an excellent addition to your compost. And I think that's basically it. Um, probably the most important thing to remember when you're putting things in that you can compost a lot of different material. It just breaks down a lot faster if you can cut it into smaller chunks like the uh, stalks of old cabbages. Um, I just sort of um, uh, cut it down into smaller sections and it composts far faster. So that's my little workshop on composting. Thanks very much for watching.